We all have that go-to movie that we just can't get enough of. It's a movie that we watch while we're making dinner. It's a movie that we watch while we're getting dressed. It's a movie that we watch while we're clipping our toenails in the bathroom. Ew. No, just kidding about that. But we all have a go-to movie, and I cannot, you know, persuade you to like a movie if it's not your go-to movie, but I'm going to try my best. What's one movie you should watch that you haven't seen yet that's not on site and sounds list, but you should see because it's really, really good? Unfriended. Unfriended is now streaming on Netflix. It's a horror movie. It came out in 2015. Oh my God. I freaking love this movie. My biggest regret in life is that I didn't see it in theaters when it came out. It's a horror movie. It made a lot of money when it came out because it was it was made on such a low budget. It's all set in a computer screen and it basically manages, yeah, literally like in a computer screen and it manages to be a ghost movie, a paranormal movie, a revenge movie, a high school bullying movie. A, a, a trashy, campy movie all at the same time, and I freaking love it. Check it out. But it is a little gory, so viewer discretion is advised. And also, yeah, there's some blood in it. Don't watch this movie and, like, make a smoothie, because there's a scene involving a blade in a smoothie, and... Oh! I'm reviewing here! Shalom, everybody! Welcome to another episode of I'm Reviewing Here! I'm your podcast host... A podcast host. I've never said that before in my life. I'm your host, Matthew Bussey, and I am watching and reviewing Say and Sound's top greatest movies of all time. I'm obnoxious and I love it. And you know what? I encourage you to be yourself and be obnoxious too, because it's really, really good. Wait, when is this episode airing? I think it's actually airing on a Friday, which means it makes kind of sense for me to say shalom. Shabbat shalom? Yeah, that's, uh, I'm forcing it there. This is also is not like an, a Jewish or an Israeli movie, so I don't know why I'm saying that. The movie I'm reviewing today is a Russian, I can't roll my R's, a Russian movie, Soviet movie, because it was the Soviet Union when it came out. I think it's good that I'm reviewing this movie on a Friday, because I think this is a very oddly kind of pleasant, sort of feel good movie. You know, it's funny, the other day I was like talking with uh, some people and they were like, you know, they just got into that show, uh, Schmigadoon, on Apple TV. And I tried watching Schmigadoon, and, like, I love Broadway, but I just can't really get into it. It's almost, like, too silly for me, you know? And I was really flabbergasted that they were, liked it because they don't like anything like that. But they kind of told me something special. They said, Matt, there's just too many depressing things on TV lately. And my gut reaction was, no, there's not. You're wrong. And then I was like, oh, well, actually... No, I'm not wrong. Abbott Elementary is supposed to be really good, but I haven't seen it yet. But here's the thing, though. This is probably why I like movies so much. I'm not into comedies. I'm really only into the dark movies. We've had this discussion before, so I don't want to get redundant here. Today's movie is a very amusing movie. I think that's the best way to describe it. It is just wildly amusing. It's it's um It's almost like... A mix of like Shakespearean love triangle romance meets like campy, like Marx Brothers, Three Stooges kind of humor in Russian. Yeah, that's kind of how I would describe this movie. Today, I'm going to talk to you all about By the Bluest of Seas. Combien de couples, par exemple, sont-ils en train d'avoir un orgasme à cet instant précis? <laughs> gotcha. I am so good at this. There is no trailer for By the Bluest of Seas. That's just a clip from Amelie. Amelie, one of the greatest films of all time. That is a dirty scene. I'm sorry. So I, I was good, though. I cut it halfway through. I think I only got through five orgasms. That is a very funny scene where Amelie, the lead character, played by Audrey Tatou, Tatou, she is on her balcony and she's imagining how many people are having an orgasm in the city of Paris at that precise moment. And at the very end, she just says, yes, which means 15. Oh man, by the blue of seas. Uh, yeah, like I said, a very, very amusing movie. I know I've said that word like 10 times already. I had never heard of this movie. Like I said, this is a Soviet made movie. It came out in 1936. It was directed by this man named Boris Barnett who I had not heard of, actually. And I say that a lot because I always, I'm, I'm a bit of a hypocrite. I act like I know all, the, all of these big prolific directors. Barnett was not really huge, in my opinion. I, I don't think he was, but he, I think 
he's he's that type of director where years later film scholars have kind of gone back and been like oh yeah this was actually this was actually a really cool dude you know I don't really know any of his other movies but I think you know he had a very good creative eye in this film and I mean his story is very tragic too he died uh, in 1965 in the Soviet Union he was 62 he committed suicide he hanged himself in his hotel room, which was really sad. And he was married at the time. Ugh, had a daughter, too. His daughter just passed away in 2021. Wow, geez, this is really dark. I didn't mean for it to get dark. By the Blues of Seas is not a dark movie. Don't worry. I know I've gone through a lot of dark movies lately. But I think what really sets it apart is that it's kind of a mix of genres in an odd way. I thought this was going to be a silent movie. When the credits rolled, when I was reading about this movie beforehand, I was like, oh, it's silent. Okay, so I, I got ready for that. And it starts off as like a silent movie, and then they start talking. And I was like, oh, okay. That was, oh, okay. And then there's singing in the movie. Oh, this is a musical? And then there's a lot of comedy. And then there's like romance in it. And I think for me, that kind of surprised me. And I think the main reason it surprised me is because, I mean, look, the elephant in the room here is that this is a Soviet made movie. Do you remember? I think it was episode three when I reviewed that movie earth. That was actually a really fun episode. Earth was another Soviet made movie. And if you watch a lot of Soviet movies from back in the day, I mean, they're all propagandistic. They're all, ba they're basically movies that like the directors were basically pressured to make the movies like pro-government and make the government look really good. But these directors, not all the time did they kind of, uh, you know, fall, uh, fall prey to that, I guess is a bit of a harsh statement, but you know, they, a lot of these directors like Barnett, they didn't really do it that way, you know, and the director of earth, I forget his name. He kind of was the same way. He didn't really fully comply with what was so used to, back then, you know, what, what the government was so used to, the communist government, you know, this is all about communism. You know, those movies are all about collective farming and collectivization. And okay, we're going to show these farms and we're going to show how great and happy everybody looks and it's all good. And the government, you know, oh, well, the government is making more money from them and they're staying poor, but it's okay. Let's just make them look really good. And let's make all the villagers look super, super happy. You know, that is like a very propagandistic movie. You know, it's a shame, propagandistic, like, I hate that it has a negative connotation because it's such a fun word to say, propagandistically, propaganda. It's a good, like, mouth cleanser, you know? It's like if you're a singer and, like, you're about to go on stage, say propaganda ten times really fast. Yeah, it's a shame, though. By the Blue of Seas, though, you know, this has been reinterpreted a lot over the years, it is a movie that kind of came and went, you know? I don't even think it really, um, well, I know this. It didn't really, like, blow people away when it came out. Of course, when it came out, the Soviet government, they didn't, like, ban it or anything like that, but they weren't very happy with it. They wished that Barnett had made the movie, like, a little bit more political and less of a, a less of a you know, frivolous, romantic movie, which is exactly what it is. And I think that's what I liked about the movie. I did laugh out loud during this movie, though, and um, not really, I, I, not when I was supposed to as well. Also, and this isn't anything against the movie, this movie has not really been restored. Uh, I watched the movie on Canopy, Canopy with a K. If you have a library card, go to Canopy. They have so many uh, uh, little known movies on there. But the restoration on that platform was horrible. You know, the sound was really off. I don't even know if that was intentional, but um, some critics actually said that the, that wasn't that was t t it, bleh, that was intentional in the movie. You know, Barnett did do that, but I don't know. It sounded just like you know they found this movie in in the basement, you know, covered in cobwebs, and they it just this is the only version that exists. Really, there's also another version on YouTube that I started watching and I had to give up because it was 25 million times worse. So it's a bit of a shame because I think if this movie, I'm hoping that this movie does get restored. I think it, I think it deserves it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. So I got to talk about the plot though. And then I'll, I'll really get into why I think this movie deserves a little bit more recognition. So by the Blue of Seas, it was written by this uh, person named Clem Clementi Mintz. Clem I almost just said chlamydia. 
And yeah, like I said, it is a very, very goofy kind of movie. And this, again, 1936, like we all knew the Three Stooges already. We all, uh, you know, the, the Marx Brothers. The next movie I'm talking about, I think, is a Marx Brothers movie. I have to double check. They were in America, though, so everybody, Americans were already really familiar with, like, the slapsticky, you know, silly comedies. But I think this was very surprising when it came out. And I think that's why all these years later, this movie has really, you know, made a name for itself. So this basically follows these two best friends. This is a very, this is very much a buddy movie. These two best friends, their names are Yusuf and Alushka. Alushka is this handsome, blonde, like Fabio-looking guy, and he's a mechanic. Uh, Yusuf, apologies if I'm not saying that right, he is a sailor, and he's kind of like the plucky comic relief, I feel like. I feel like Alushka, Alushka doesn't really get a lot of like jokes in the movie. But when the movie starts off, they are sailing in the middle of the Caspian Sea, and their boat capsizes, and they are... Adrift at sea for three days, crazy, 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 getting throwbacks to that episode of uh, Outer Banks when they're like in the middle of a hurricane and then it cuts to the next morning and they're just floating on a little piece of wood, completely okay. <laughs> so stupid. I had to give up on that show. But they've been adrift for a few days and then they're rescued by these fishermen. And these fishermen, it turns out, they work on a collective farm uh, on this island, which is right off the coast of uh azerbaijan azerbaijan that's how you pronounce it right now this was not its own country back then it was it was part of the soviet union so it's soviet azerbaijan uh and yeah this is an island there it's a very small island i don't even like see any kids or anything but it's a collective farm which means everybody there is working they're all working their best you know and it's their lives you know the government the government owns them and everything so that's what it's all about now right off the bat like this movie is goofy um you know when the when the guys get uh rescued at sea like they pick up yusuf and he yells don't i'm ticklish so like right off the bat you're like oh okay this is that kind of movie and then when they get to the island things get even more kooky like they get there the editing is just so weird in this movie it, they get there and you see uh, this woman and you see these other people and it looks like they're hiding from someone and then you see this random guy in like part of the ocean like the the marsh or whatever it's called and he has a gun and he keeps shooting at something and then you just keep hearing these women like scream but then you if it turns out that it's like ducks and he's shooting at ducks but if he's shooting at ducks then why are all the women running away is he shooting at the women <laughs> i was legit very very confused so it turns out okay he's just a random adjunct character he's just a duck hunter whatever he's not part of the movie these two men yusuf and alushka they meet they see the most beautiful woman on the island, and it is a woman named Mashenka. Now, her name in the movie is Mashenka, but on IMDb and like all these film descriptions, they have her named as Mar Maria. Mariah? M A R I Y A? But I don't get that. And I even Googled um, Mashenka Maria to see if like they meant like the same thing, but they don't. They're totally, totally different. So I don't really get that. Could not find any information on that. Plus, Mashenka is more of it. That's a cooler name. Maria is. Eh, not a bad name, but it's just, you know, it's everywhere. Maria, West Side Story. Oh, I gotta watch that movie now. Mashenka is a bit of a tease, to say the least. And she's also very, very, uh, you know, a bit of a klutz herself. These guys, though, when they see her, they are like dogs with their uh, tongues out of their mouth. They are like drooling. And again, it's done. It's very much done in like a cartoonish way. Like these guys, it's like a close up of their faces and they're like, Hey, like just the biggest grins on their faces staring at this woman. And this woman, you know, Mashenka is kind of looking at them, kind of giving them the cutesy little, Ooh, who are you guys? You know? So they're immediately smitten and they kind of get to work on this farm. You know, the farm is very, the farmers are very accepting of them uh, they really look up to Alushka when he tells them that he's a mechanic, because it turns out that all of their mechanics on the island have left for the Pacific Fleet. The Pacific Fleet, that was just, uh, that was the Russian Navy uh, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Is the Russian Navy, I'm sorry. I'm horrible with navies. Um, so yeah, they've all left, so they're like, oh my god, Alushka, you're great, you know? And Alushka kind of loves all the attention, and especially he loves that 
you know, Mashenka is like completely looking up to him more and, and, you know, he thinks, oh my God, this is love. This is love. They're both a little, you know, uh, Alushka and Yusuf are, are, I don't know if they really are reading things right because I don't think Mashenka is that big of a tease in this movie. She doesn't kiss them. She doesn't touch them or do anything like that. No, she's just living her life. She's just a happy young woman. And like I said, she is a bit of a klutz. Like there's a scene where she gets, you know, she sneak, she becomes friendly with both of them and she's carrying this vase of uh, water and she goes to throw it at them, but it's a windy day. So when she throws it, all the water, you know, splashes on her face. It's a, it's a cute moment, you know? She also sings at random in this movie and that that's what made me laugh out loud because I just... <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird movie. This is a weird um, movie. I'm going to... Uh, let me get to the end, though. So so where else does this go, though? So this movie, uh, you know, Alushka is super, super popular. Uh, Yusuf is a little bit jealous. And there's one day they all have to... All the farmers have to go out to sea. And Yusuf is like, Alushka, get up. And Alushka is like, I'm not feeling well. I, I, uh, I, I can't go. And Yusuf is like, what are you talking about? And he's just like, I can't go. And it's totally fake. You know, Al uh, Alushka's totally faking it. So they go off and Alushka goes into town and he buys some gifts for Mashenka. And when he comes back, uh, Yusuf is absolutely furious. And in front of everybody, he chastises his friend and just goes... He's a liar. You know, look what he did. He lied about being sick and he didn't help us. You know, he's not helping the cause and he's not like us. And it's a really dramatic moment. And, you know, there's this really cool shot too where Mashenka like rips off these, uh, pearl, this, this, uh, pearl necklace that she's holding. And that there, there's like a really cool, like slow motion shot of the pearls hitting the ground. Like, dee, 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 dee. Cool. Really good cinematography. The cinematography was by this uh, guy named Mikhail Kirillov, but they, they're they not really known for anything. The same with the author, uh, or I'm sorry, the same with the screenwriter. Didn't really do a lot after this. I think that's why this movie uh, is, is kind of, um, it's a movie that, you know, you kind of like stick your hand into a, a bucket of marbles and you, you pull it out and you're like, oh, that's that. That was a horrible analogy. I don't, I have no idea what I was trying to go with, with, I don't know what I was, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, give me a, a break. I'm trying my best here. So Alushka is very, very embarrassed and, but he's a good friend and he goes up to Yusuf and he basically says, okay, I'm a liar. I think, um, I think you should go, you know, we obviously both like the same girl. I think you should go and be with her. You know, you should go and marry her. Uh, nothing has happened between them, but you know, they, they've been flirting a little bit, but He's like, okay, I thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to go do that. But then Yusuf, at the same time, really feels for his friend and is like, wait, are you? why are you saying this? Like, are you really over her? Because it feels like you're not. They're at sea when this is happening. Mashenka is also on the boat and they fight. And, you know, there's this big, violent, crazy, loud, intense storm going on. And they have this big argument. And the boat, you know is rocking back and forth and Mashenka gets flung off of it and everyone's like oh no where'd she go and they presume that she died they come back to shore they are very very upset and then they see this this figure in the water like floating <laughs> up to you know the shoreline and then this is such a bad special effect she gets like sucked back out into the ocean now, that happens with the current, I get it, but in this weird effect that they did, it looked like somebody put, like, a rope around her foot and just went, Whoop! and sucked her back into the, the open water. And it's so funny. It's, it's a pretty bad moment, I have to admit. But anyway, it's all happy, though, because, you know, the, the you know, um, Yusuf and Alushka are like, oh, my God, our love, she's alive. And everybody in town, they were having a funeral for her. And they come back, they race back with her and, and go, look, look, she's alive, she's alive. And Yusuf, at the same time um, this is going on, he, you know, kind of takes uh, his, no, not Yusuf, I'm sorry, Alushka. What he does is he kind of takes Yusuf's advice and he so, sort of pulls Mashenka aside and says, okay, I love you, I love you, you know, we, we should be together. And then <sighs> Mashenka turns him down. Yeah. Ouch. So Alushka is heartbroken. 
And then the same thing kind of happened. This kind of confused me a little bit because it, apparently, like, the opposite happens. This time, Alushka goes up to Yosef and says, okay, I think you should go and be with her because she doesn't want me. <laughs> Dudes, oh my God. It's like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You get her. No, you get her. No, you get her. No, you get her. It's a little silly. But you know what? They're good friends. They care about each other. So Yosef goes up uh, to Mashenka and then Mashenka confesses She's got a fiancé, uh, Mashenka. She says she has a fiancé. He's in the Navy right now. She's waiting for him to come back, and that's why she can't be with either of the guys. Alushka is, you know, utterly heartbroken, and he's getting on a boat, and he's going out to sea to basically leave them, you know, because he, he figures that uh, Yusuf is going to stay with Mashenka. But then Yusuf sees him, and, you know, it's a nice moment because he's like, you know what, Mashenka, no hard feelings. I'm going to go be with my friend. And he races up to his best buddy and he gets on that boat and they sail off into the, into the distance. And then, my friends, by the bluest of seas, ends. Yeah, it's a cute movie. It's a cute movie. Um, there's a lot of quirky moments. Again, the editing, what I really liked though about this is that the editing is very, when it's good, it's really good. When it's not good, it's really bad. There's a scene where Yusuf and I believe it's Yusuf or it could be Alushka. I forget which character it is, but they are talking with Mashenka in this shot and it's all one shot and the scene doesn't change and they're talking and then all of a sudden the background changes like the background, like the room that they're in just magically changes. And it's like in the blink of an eye, I was like, huh, what? Huh? I had to rewind because I thought like my, my player had skipped a scene. I literally was like, what? And it's, th that's not, that, that's nothing to do with the preservation of this movie. That's just bad editing, bad editing. I'm sorry. Um, whoever the editor was, I forget. Oh, cinematography. Well, that's different from editing, but I mean, there's that, but at the same time though, um, the editing is so-so. The sound is so-so. But the cinematography is absolutely beautiful. The shots of the Caspian Sea and the ocean and, you know, modern-day, uh, you know, Soviet Azerbaijan are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the shots of the water especially are just beautiful. This movie made me want to go to the beach. This is the second movie in a row that's, like, very beach, summer-heavy, and it makes me want to go really badly. I mean, that blew me away. So kudos to that. Um, I also, you know, I read something too about how this movie is very unique and that, yes, it starts off with you thinking it's a silent movie and then there's actually, it, it, it ends up being a talkie. A talkie is a name back then for movies that, you know, had dialogue. There was another very famous movie by Charlie Chaplin called Modern Times that was the same way. It was, and it came out the same year, actually, 1936. It was both. The movie starts off being silent and then it cuts to dialogue. Now, I, that might not sound like a huge deal, but for back then, that was a huge deal. That's a huge deal for back in the day to take two very different genres and combine them. And I give this movie kudos for that. I keep saying kudos. I, I give this movie a lot of credit for that. I really like that about this movie. I think the movie didn't really have fully three-dimensional characters. It was very silly and lightweight and, you know, frivolous is the best way to describe it. But I like how it kind of lived in its own world. You know, I liked how Barnett, the director, really was just kind of making the movie his own way, you know? And best of all, it's not really a political movie. Communism, yes, that plays a big part in this movie, but it's just the setting of the film. It's not really part of the story. It's not like Earth. You know, Earth, that is part of the story. And this movie, this is really just a good old-fashioned slapsticky... Oh my god, shut up. Sorry, friends are texting me. This is a good old-fashioned slapsticky black and white romantic comedy. And it just happens to not be American. And I think it's really fun. I think it's really quirky and very fun. Not perfect. Not one of my favorites. But I was very pleased to watch it. And it's nice and short. It's like an hour and nine minutes. And I think the fact that it's not super political, the fact that it is a mix of genres and it is just a wild, little, goofy, strange, funny movie is very nice because we all need that nowadays because life is very hard.
indeed. What is the moral of By the Blues of Seas? Oh, friends, always stick together. Yeah. No, I mean, for real, friends always stick together. Be, trust your friends, you know, stick with your friends because you won't have them forever, you know. Oh, that got a little dark. No, that's not really a good moral. The moral of the movie is, you know, your best friends are always going to be there for you. Even if you both like the same person, they're always going to be there for you. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. I always have to get like pessimistic, but I mean, I have to be, I mean, come on. Mo they're not there most of the time. No, but it is though. It's a feel good movie. It really is a feel good movie. Where can you watch by the Blues of Seas? I said this already, but you can watch it on Canopy. Uh, highly recommended. You can watch it on YouTube, but I don't recommend it. Do I don't recommend it. The, the um, audio is like a lot worse on YouTube, but I do recommend it. I do. Um, it's a nice movie. Oh, you guys, thanks for tuning in. It's really nice to review a happy movie for once because there are so many dark ones. <laughs> I have no problem with dark movies, but I mean, trying to talk about Grief of the Fireflies, that like killed me. It's like, yeah, this is a movie where a little girl dies. Ugh. I mean, it's always, it's sometimes it can get hard to talk about, you know, these movies. Also because me, I'm such a crazy lunatic vulgar lunatic that, you know, when I have to get serious, I'm always worried that I'm going to say something uh, culturally insensitive or just inappropriate. But I think I'm doing a good job so far. Well, I did also, you know, show you a clip from people having orgasms. But it's fake. It's all fake. It's just from a movie. Relax. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is amazing. This is always so much fun. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of I'm Reviewing Here. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We have a full slate of movies next week. I'm not lying. A full friggin' slate. And they're all very famous American movies. Oh, no, that's a lie. One of them is British, I think. Uh, two of them I've seen, but not in a long time. So I can't wait to rewatch them. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. You can, uh, catch, I'm reviewing here wherever you catch, uh, where, wherever you catch, wherever you get your podcasts. I am on YouTube now as well. If you want to listen to episodes there, new episodes there the same day as new episodes on the podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at I'm reviewing here. You can follow me personally at Mabusi. Why are you laughing? It's not funny. It's just my last name, B-U-S-S-Y. And my first name is Matthew. So M-A, Mabusi. Get it? Really, really good. Really fun. This is always great. This is always fun. Everybody stay safe. If you get on a boat, be safe. That's also the big moral of this movie. Boats will kill you. Yeah. Not just in the Caspian Sea, but anywhere. For real. Be safe out there, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. <laughs>